Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Mobile World Congress 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Palo Alto, California, the Silicon Valley, uh, Silicon Angle studio for the Silicon Valley coverage of Mobile World Congress 2017. I'm Jeff, we're in the Cube. We're here with CUBE alumni and one of our favorite guests, Alan Cohen, the Chief Commercial Officer of Lumio, hot security startup, uh, coming in to share his commentary on Mobile World Congress. Uh, Alan's a veteran in the industry, great to have you. I've uh, been on Silicon Valley Friday show uh, a few weeks ago. Great to see you. It's thrilled to be back, beautiful environment. Um, you need a party. It was great to see you yeah. on the Silicon Valley Friday show because after our segment, the New York Times ran that story. Friedman had the, the crossover. They took our content. We're going to Breed Park and, and next. Then, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and great, great content was serving yeah. it up. So I want to say thank you. It was great well, coverage. Happy to do it. Thanks to the New York Times for picking up our content, taking it to the next level. Um, always great to have a conversation. You got a good way to, to put the finger on the pulse. Uh, Mobile World Congress. Two days uh, of, of coverage for us. I'll just give you a, mm -hmm. a quick Reader's Digest summary of what we're seeing. It's a bipolar show. It's a device show and a telco trying to figure things out show. And then in the middle is a lot of money to be had by whoever can help sort out the counseling of the telco business. Intel certainly is a big player in that with uh, 5G. And, if, and there's a lot of under the uh, covers stuff. S, uh, SDN, NFV. New networks and right. new paradigms of how to configure these architectures. Um, not much mention of security, but that's essentially what's going on. You got your, everyone's writing about the devices, the new LG, the Yahweh, you know, all this stuff's going on. And then you get the telcos, well, you know, speeds and feeds and build out and business models. Right. So you, what's, your, what's your assessment? How do you- All right, so I've been to the Mobile World Congress 10 times. We never talked about this, but I actually worked the cellular carrier in the 90s. And you know, I mean, to me, the carry the show is the same every year. It's drones, clones, and phones, right? That's what people <laughs> really focus on, right? And like, so the 11,000 versions of the Android phone, even though Apple's still taking 89% of the profit out of the industry, so there's only really one phone you have to pay attention to. On one side, and then the kind of ins like more bits, less money side of being on the carrier, right? Because what is being an ISP, wireless ISP, or a uh, wired ISP is like, every year I give you more bits and I make less money. I'm going to make it up in volume. And I keep pouring all this capital into this. So, uh, you know, to me, they, they really haven't yet completely broken out of that paradigm. Now, the, the key thing is that the mobile network is the primary network, yep. right? So the, the, all the profitability in telco is in the mobile network. Like nobody says, hey, I'm going to get up and build a wire network and pull some more copper to your house, right? <laughs> so uh, that so that is the principal way that people are using it, and we have now an entire generation that don't know you can actually plug a phone into yeah. a wall or an Ethernet connection. Uh, so I think that's that's the kind of competitive dynamics that people go with. But and that's under yeah. pressure though, because now where you know, the carriers always and the operators always yeah. control the relationship to the user via the what contract. What you buy an iPhone lately? There's no more relationship. You just buy whatever device you want. Well, the ending of the subsidy ended the, like, well, I mean, I'm not talking about subsidy. I'm talking about, like, I have yeah. a contract with AT&T. I can certainly change it to Verizon, so right. I can certainly swap. But for the most part, the carrier views me as a subscriber. Right. Pretty, so much, pretty much that's it. They bill me. I'm really not getting anything extra from AT&T. Maybe I get some hot spots. Right. But, I mean, come on. I mean, this, what value? You're just ARPU. <laughs> Where do they go from here? And we had, we had the guys from Data Turn on who had an interesting proposition, and they have a ton of data. So there really has been this struggle institutionally, as you know. I mean, core competency has been, you know, provisioning, truck roll, and billing. Billing. So that's what else can they do? What's your thoughts? If you know, let's okay, let's here's a mental here's, a, here's an exercise. We get elected to be the CEO of um, the biggest telco. You're Verizon. I'm AT and T. We own the telcos. Okay. What do we do? So we fire everybody. Do we do what Donald Trump does and just fire everyone and run it the way we want to run it, or do we? How do we? Do we build it? I mean, what would we do? Seriously, what would we do if we were telcos? Well, we want to put our I mean, business model hat on. So I mean, I think you you have to kind of deconstruct the value chain of that. So what do telcos do is they offer up content for the most part. You know, the, these devices, they, I, I have to teach my kids that you can make a call with it, but aside from a call, what mostly what people do is use some form of internet application. Mm -hmm. um, they don't get any other money for the internet application, they don't get any money for hosting it, they don't get any ho money for managing it, they don't get very much money for making it perform. So to me, the biggest challenge of the telcos is actually Amazon. 
right? Because if you think about it, Amazon is now becoming the supply chain for so much internet delivered content. And if the telco wants to be something other than the last mile and the wires connecting uh, that last mile up, by the way, it takes a lot of wires to build a wireless network. People yeah. forget that. Um, they're going long. to have to start to figure out, and you know, can I, ter can I, you know, whether it's caching, data center, can I turn profitable services to the people who are all competing at the edge of that universe and applications? I don't think they really have done that. I mean, they're some of the largest data center operators in the world, but they haven't really thought it through. Um, I was at a studio in LA a couple of weeks ago, and it's one of the large national studios, and it's a Lumio customer, and they've, they've now moved all their content distribution into Amazon. So they don't send the content from their network to the affiliates. They put it in Amazon, and Amazon delivers it. How much longer is it going to be for more than actually the studio works out of Amazon? Yeah, I mean, the head end's dead. I mean, this cable you yeah. know, is kind of changing. That's the media piece, but also you have all these new use cases, the fantasy of autonomous driving cars, which, you know, you could say it's a data center yeah. on wheels. Yes, I could buy that. Is it going to be uploading data every half mile? I mean, where's the wild? So then you have this new construction, smart cities. It's another one. Smart homes, well, I mean, you see I, Echo in there. And, I mean, I, look, I made my living out of making data centers more secure, but the data center is going to completely evolve. The, the, the sheer profusion of data that's going to come out of these devices, and a lot of people have talked about the edge architecture, is going to blow up the idea of backhauling it to a centralized server, server process it in a bunch of ways and spit Keep it an back example. out. Um, you know, for me, if I wanted to write a, write a smart or autonomous car management system, let's say I was the city of Palo Alto, and I'm responsible for now, instead of the traffic lights, I'm now also responsible for how autonomous cars go through Palo Alto. I'm not sending things some back to some data center in you know, northern Atlanta, you know, in Virginia for Amazon. I'm going to have to figure out how to process all that data closest to where those cars are, make intelligence decisions mm -hmm. about them, all that local, and then kind of send back out instructions. So what I think you're going to do is you're going to see a shift from the central model to a much more distributed model, and I'm going to have to have like right. mini data centers. So instead of having 10 mega data centers, I might have a thousand mini mega data centers that's going to make all of these things happen. And I don't think a lot of people have kind of paid attention to that architectural shift. If you're in the process of business yeah. of selling servers or networks, you're still thinking client server backhaul it into the giant data center with you know next to the nuclear power plant. Yeah. But it's all going to have to move a lot closer to where if something, because like I, I only care about that decision right now with the 50 cars coming down middle field. Yeah. And, and the, then, but and the big, streets that feed into it. But there's it. a bigger architecture thing that yeah. Mobile World Congress is trying to, to point at, which is an ecosystem. I mean, let's take a step back. Is Mobile Congress uh, a relevant show, or is it becoming a CES sideshow, biz dev show? I mean, Sargo Live was on yesterday saying, look, it's where everyone goes, the who's who goes there. It's essentially a biz dev show that happens to have a trade show running. Well, I mean, it. you know, look, it's like, it's, this is, it's the agora, right? You know, the Greek term for marketplace. Like, you go there to do business with people, and if they happen to be, it's like RSA. Two weeks ago, right? you guys were up at RSA. It's like, is, is it really fun to walk through 1,400 vendor booths, or is it like everybody who makes decisions on buying and selling security stuff happen to be in the same, two, you know, yeah. two square miles of San Francisco? So I don't think that part goes away, but I do think increasing... It's a super important part. Yeah, and, but and I think the architecture of who plays is going to change, right? So, you know, the question you got to ask is, who's going to be the Amazon of the mobile world and you know disrupt the me the network model right and the network is you know the network is now just something glued together with software i mean like you know i mean years ago they had this thing that didn't really work out they were all called the cloud yeah. where i would rent my access point in london to mm -hmm. people and i'd use their wi-fi and you know the stuff that glues it together is much is always much more important than the infrastructure itself and i so if if mobile world congress is going to be important there's going to be a track on the people actually kind of glue all of that stuff together all right so i got to get your take on um the the business conversation you just mentioned this marketplace yep. everyone's there what are some of the conversations that you could imagine that was happening at mobile world congress just i know we're not there i mean we've been seeing hearing some of the hallway conversations obviously 5g is the big story what are some of the marketplace hallway conversations or business meetings that are going on in your mind's eye if you had to make a guess on what's happening well so what are what are what are the most important content that people like to use today pop quiz you know this yeah Con uh, video video yeah. right so to me what were the conversations netflix netflix was having and amazon prime was having right because they're not just waiting for you to be in your tv to consume their right there people are consuming increasing amounts of video content on mobile devices so i think there's the i think there's the hollywood influence 
right, or the studio, or you know, was it the National Association of Programming Executives, and that be, right? How do they? Because the, the, you know, what you're doing is, if you if you're a content producer, you're looking for eyeballs and people to pay for it. And there's nothing, you know, there's nothing more ubiquitous than that piece of glass we're all carrying in front of our nose, mm -hmm. you know, 17 yeah. hours a day. So I think that's a big set of business discussions. Um, your prior guest, I think, was talking about this. It's like, okay, is there just a, just a dramatically different way to build this network, right? Because so 5G is going to give you the promise that this is more is a lot of work. I, the physics are, I'm getting a lot more bandwidth. What am I going to do with it? Well, people are going to fill it up. Yeah. And then... And there's different use cases. There's yeah. also mobility and then high bandwidth dense areas right. and then things that are moving at 100 miles an hour 50 miles an hour i mean planes yeah i mean it's just trains. so i think i think there there's an element of that i think there's the internet of things discussion which i was like i still think five years you know it's like the internet of whatever things right i call the iowt right because it's like nobody's it's not really about connecting your light bulb to the network but there are a lot of kind of things in motion that people want to better manage well we just introduced our research yeah. agenda this morning with peter burris we talked out iot IOTP, right? People, Internet right. of Things, and people. So have, people have you have, have you gone back to the Fourier family and counted up how many IP addresses you have no. as a family? No. Cohen family has 111 IP addresses. <laughs> IPv6 for you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we need a gateway man for that Netgear router that comes into the house. But that that is actually we just it. bought the new Google. Um, uh, access points, the ones that have that little mesh. Uh, you need mist. You got to get mist in here. But yes, I'm just kidding you. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, but, but, but you know, that's, I mean, so there are a lot of things. The other thing is that there's the interaction of the mobile network. And actually, I think Google's a great example. So if you think about it, Google produces the Wi Fi at Starbucks and a lot of retail. Now they, they're interesting on what's going on. So tr today we think about the mobile network as a mobile network, and we think about the broadband fixed network as a different network. And like the interplay between those two, yeah. it's like you know, it's, it's like there's there's a lot more than Foursquare, yeah. right? And then and Facebook. Well, certainly fiber to the home is very capital intensive. We know what it costs to do a truck right. roll to trench and to connect to the home with a NID. Overlay wireless, fixed wireless would be fantastic there. Well, so That's you have the overlay, and then what? What when I know that you're coming by, right? Because 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 the because the, the fixed network is now actually a Wi-Fi network. Right, I mean, it, yeah. it has wires. So you have the mobile network, you have the Wi-Fi network, and you have people kind of moving in and out of those environments. And I think there's, I'm seeing a lot of companies getting funded, people actually trying to say, how do we monetize that experience? So this is obviously what Four Square and those yeah. other location guys started years ago. I mean, look at something like Waze, right? Waze, yeah. Waze went from a you know, GPS app with social interaction to, to a car sharing, ride sharing going after Uber, Right, this Google company. Well, we had an NGT right. Docomo VC, Christina yeah. Koo, talk about mapping as a huge app for these telcos. Yeah, mapping the is the killer app, right? I mean, everything, almost yeah. everything on your phone that's local works off a map, which, by yeah. the way, is paid for us as taxpayers. It comes, the GPS comes from the United <laughs> States government. It's free. <laughs> the, the most powerful utility in mobility is location, and GPS is free. All right. It's, Final question. Yeah. Bumper sticker for Mobile World Congress from your perspective this year. Yawner, you know, golf clap, or standing ovation? Um, I say golf clap because more bandwidth is good, and I think there is an insatiable demand. We're a long way from ending the bandwidth drought, um, and there is a bandwidth drought. So I, I think, you know, the other thing is like there, there aren't camps anymore. I think people will coalesce very quickly yeah. on 5G, so uh, good time to be in that business. So. Yeah. One, one hand clap, baby. Small golf clap. clap, yeah. yeah. Not, not, not a hole in one. Certainly uh, more golf analogies coming on the cube. Alan Cohn here, Chief Commercial Officer at Lumio. We didn't get into security, but we'll do that next time. I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back with more Mobile World Congress coverage after this short break.